welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and co-founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, we take a look at the latest International Property Measurement Standards, IPMS update. It's essential listening for all our ICS APC and asset rates candidates undertaking the measurement competency, as well as qualified chartered surveyors. So clearly understanding and applying the latest RICS measurement guidance is a common source of confusion for candidates. Candidates must follow RICS Property Measurement 2nd Edition, which incorporates IPMS for residential and office buildings. These are of mandatory application and must be reported when measuring these types of buildings. Candidates can dual report if requested by a client or make a departure if justified to both IPMS and the Code of Measuring Practice bases. So, for example, an office could be dual reported to IPMS 3 and net internal area, or a residential house could be dual reported to IPMS 3B and gross internal area. IPMS have also released two further standards for industrial and retail buildings. These have not yet been adopted by our ICS in technical guidance, so this would in theory be a future third edition of property measurement, so they're not yet of mandatory application. Candidates should be aware of their existence but are unlikely to have any experience of applying them in practice unless perhaps a client has specifically requested their early adoption. IPMS Retail Buildings was published in September 19, whilst IPMS Industrial Buildings was published earlier in January 2018. And as I said, neither have been incorporated to date by our ICS in an updated edition of Property Measurement. There's also a final IPMS standard, all building asset classes, which was closed for consultation in March 2021. We understand that this standard should be published in the near future by IPMS, but again, not adopted by RICS until a new edition of property measurement is released. So what bases does IPMS retail buildings include? We've got IPMS 1 external, typically used for planning purposes of summary costing or summary costing of development proposals. We've got IPMS 2, retail internal, typically used for providing data on the use of space or for benchmarking. We then have IPMS 3A, B and C, retail occupier, typically used for transactional and cost allocation purposes. IPMS 3A relates to the area in exclusive occupation, including the floor area occupied by external walls, internal walls and pillars. It excludes any external floor areas, sheltered areas and ancillary areas. 3B relates to the area in exclusive occupation, including the floor area occupied by internal walls and pillars. It may also include external floor areas and ancillary areas. 3C relates to the area in exclusive occupation, excluding the floor areas occupied by external walls, internal walls and pillars. Moving on to IPMS for industrial buildings, we've got four bases, IPMS 1, 2, 3A and 3B. IPMS 1 external is typically used for planning purposes or summary costing of development proposals. IPMS 2 industrial internal is typically used for providing data on the use of space or for benchmarking. We then have IPMS 3A industrial external exclusive occupation and 3B industrial internal exclusive occupation, both typically used for sale and leasing purposes. Finally, we have the draft IPMS all building asset classes. And here we have six bases. IPMS 1 external is the floor area for all or part of a building measured to its external boundary. IPMS 2 internal, the floor area for all or part of a building measured to its internal boundary. 3A exclusive occupation external, the floor area available on an exclusive basis to an occupier measured to the external boundary of the building. 3B exclusive occupation Internal, the floor area available on an exclusive basis to an occupier and where appropriate measured to the internal boundary of the building. And finally then, the 2, 4A, a selected measured floor area which includes internal walls and columns and 4B, a selected measured floor area which excludes internal walls and columns. 
Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.